Hi. Well, today I thought I'd do something a little bit different to uh, to the norm. If you've seen some of my other videos, you're probably aware I uh, collect a number of older valve receivers, um, basically from about 1950 post-war years onwards. Uh, one of the pieces of equipment which I've, uh, I've seen a lot on is a TV7 valve or tube tester. It's an American tester used by the American military for checking tubes in the field. Um, it doesn't give you exact GM figures, but it does give you an indication whether the tube is good or bad. It does actually test the GM, however. Um, this tube tester I've had for some uh, three or four years has actually uh, been used to check a lot of the tubes in the equipment I have. The reason I'm showing this is I noticed that uh, so a few people have been asking recently on, uh, on YouTube how these things actually operate. All right, okay, so that's a tube tester once it's opened up. You have the base section, which has all the electronics, and the upper lid with a few adapters, pin straighteners, uh, and there's actually a book in here which tells you exactly the settings for the tube tester. Now, you can download these if you just buy the tube tester, but uh, that's basically the, uh, the arrangement. Uh, the mains lead here, and this tube tester only runs off 110 volts, so you'll need to, uh, if you're not living in the US and you're living in a 240 volt country, you need to use a 240 volt adapter. Anyway, what I'll do is I will push this through to my, uh, my adapter downstairs underneath the desk and I'll set the tube tester to work just one moment. Okay, so I'll tell you a few more thing, details about the, uh, the equipment. Uh, the main switch power on. Uh, you'll see a couple of interesting uh, things happen here. One, there's a main pilot light which tells you the, uh, the AC is actually present. Uh, down the bottom here is a ballast, it's actually a ballast bulb, and it's used to adjust the line. And uh, if you uh, look at the array of switches down the right hand side here, you'll see one of them is actually a line adjustment. And the intention is to set the line adjustment so that it actually sits right on the line figure. So this one's reading slightly high, uh, I guess the volts are a bit high in the afternoon, so I'll just readjust, and this is going to be tricky with holding the camera, I'll just readjust it and uh, come back to it in a second. Okay, so we now adjusted it so that it reads spot in the center there on the line adjust. It's the first thing you have to do. Now, uh, as you see along the upper section here, there's a number of tube bases. This is where you plug in the tubes you're going to test. Uh, there's even the, uh, I think the acorn tube uh, fitment here. There's how you set the uh, filament voltage to everything from 0.6 right there to 217 volts. Uh, fundamentally, you only use it on 6.3 and 12.6. This selection of switches here are a set of switches which are basically setting the internal wiring to match the tube you're trying to test. And if you read the book itself, you'll see that beside each valve, um, this one's here, there's a set of switch settings, which is in this case FT4-1200. And there's also a set of ballasts. Anyway, the base switches here set the wiring for the switch for the valve you're going to test. Uh, what I do have here is some 6BA6s, I tested before, uh, just a few months ago, I believe they're okay. So we'll go back to the book, look up the 6BA6, and uh, we shall find it shortly. Here we go, I'll just take advantage here of settling down. Now, on the 6BA6 settings, 6BA6, 6.3 volts heaters, which you would expect. ET15672. So what I'll do is set the selectors to ET1. E, put this on E. T1. Five. Six. Seven. Correction. No, I was doing right. Five, six, seven, two. So just to go through it again, and that one isn't set right, we're looking at E. T, 1, 5, 6, 7, 2. Now the further numbers we need to set for this particular valve, and to the right of it you'll see there's a 9, a lot of dashes and a C. The 9 is actually referring to the bias you're going to apply to the tube to set up for, to measure the GM. And the bias is this variable pot here, you see it goes around to 100. And we're going to set it to approximately 9. Which is uh, that sort of idea. Um, the shunt I'll take out is for checking diodes. And fundamentally, the equipment there is now ready to do a measurement. The function switch in the right hand corner allows you to select the sort of measurement you're going to make. In this case, we'll sweat it to range C. 
because that's what the book is telling us. We will be pushing button 3, which is the GM future conductance, and we'll be ensuring that we get a figure of 41 or more. So, we'll go and uh, take our trusty bag of owls, pull a valve out. Now this is a B7 valve base, pins are reasonably straight. Bear in mind that uh, these two bases are quite old. I'll try and put it in, you'll see it start to uh, warm up hopefully. And I'll uh, look for a little bit of heating coming up. As you can see on the side of the tube, there's a 6BA6. And it looks like it may be warming up in there. Or is that just a reflection of the light? Well, we'll go to the GM conduction test. And I do know some of these pins are a bit grubby, but there we go. This particular tube is coming up. In fact, I probably hit it a little bit too early. It's looking at around about 70, going towards 80. So, uh, yeah, it just took a bit of time to warm up. You can see the actual uh, heaters down in there. Just come back again, and by pushing the mutual conductance, we can check to see where we are. And there you go. It's up at 75. Now, although that doesn't uh, really tell us exactly the, the current, um, it's a recognized test for the tube uh, under the average conditions. Uh, this difference differentiates itself from the AVO test where you're actually checking the physical GM. Um, and to be honest, this is basically what you need to do a lot of diagnostic work. Uh, you really just need to know if the tube's good, bad, or halfway in between. One of the other functions I haven't shown you is that there are short chucks here, and uh, there's a little neon here which tells you there's a short, so we can go around through to five, three, basically it's checking all the intercathode checks, and it looks all good. I have had before tubes come up there and uh, give a problem. There are some gas checks here, I've not used them myself. As a rectifier check I have used, and as a ability to reverse the meter, I'm not quite sure what that's for. Um, but for the functionality of just checking basic tubes, B9s, B7s, excellent, excellent unit. Uh, it saved me many, many hours of uh, trying, to think, trying to think that the receiver is wrong, when in fact the valve was low, bad, or shorted out. Anyway, um, hopefully that explains a little bit more about the TV7 tube tester. Uh, a few of these come up there, I don't know, several hundred dollars off eBay. Um, get one fully working, then uh, they're good on you. It'll last you plenty of years.